All right, first up. Sick and engineering. Okay, by request, somebody emailed in and said, could you guys make some sort of like passive hub for STEM QT that's yes. very small, that's like the size of your standard STEM QT size? And I'm like, yeah, that's a good idea. And so we made one. So this is a uh, board that does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. There are seven vertical ports uh, to make, you know, so there's, you can have more than two because usually they go out the sides. Um, there's an on LED to tell you that it's powered, but basically all the SCL, SDAs, powers and grounds are connected together. Um, so this doesn't do like I squared C address, renumbering or sharing. I mean, everything still has to be on a separate address, but if you don't want to chain your I squared C, if you want to like have it be in a star formation, which one, it will reduce the capacitance of your line, which means you can run a little bit faster, but also maybe has more elegant wiring. Um, then this uh, board will do it. Also has breakouts if you want to use it with a breadboard, but it's designed to be used uh, solderless. And I can I can just show real fast. This is the uh, this is just the demo. Um, again, you don't have to plug in five things, but uh, ideally, you know, you would have That's your fun. controller, and then now you can have uh, five boards. You can see each one is getting power, and then um, this has a power LED as well, so you know that it's working. Um, just a handy, you know, couple bucks for the wiring simplicity. Some people were asking for it. It's got mounting holes and um, we made it the same size as like, you know, 90% of our boards are one inch by 0.7 inch. So you see it, um, if you have like mounting holes in that location, uh, this will fit just fine. Okay. Passive hub. Next up. Uh, we now have the yellow seven segment HT16K33. Uh, fully assembled. Uh, it's come with Stemma QT ports for a bit, but you still have to solder it together, and now we sell it pre-soldered. So uh, even less work, you just plug and play. You can also show that on the overhead. You can still use it with a breadboard if you like, like our original version, um, but uh, we've been Stemma QTifying uh, as many boards as possible. So, uh, you know, plugged in here, um, and you see you just, uh, you, you have these vertical ports, you can chain them together. And since the ports are vertical, you can have them end to end. If you would like to have gigantic numbers of digits, you can have, uh, with the address select jumpers, you can have up to eight of these in a row. And they're the same size and mounting holes as before. They just have the stem QT and they now come in eight free block. Alrighty, next up. Okay, next up, um, so one of the things that we've been doing at, during the ship shortage is finding alternatives for parts that we can't get. So one of the parts that we couldn't get for a very long time was the CP2102 or CP2104 USB serial converter, and we use it in a lot of boards, and so this was a little bit of a crisis, um, but thankfully we got the WCH uh, CH9102 as an alternative, and so this chip is, uh, pretty much pin compatible with the CP2102 and CP2104. It has slightly different behaviors, which I'll talk about right now. So USB serial converter is really handy because a lot of ports have, sorry, a lot of computers have USB, not RS-232, but just about every microcontroller, your ESP32s, your Atmega 328s, your 8051s, they all have a serial port that's like three volt or five volt. Um, so first up, this is a five volt compatible but three volt logic uh, you can change the uh, voltage from three to five but I'd say keep it on three and then um, you can always input five volts and it will be fine with it it does have uh, control lines a DTR DCD ring DSR RTS CTS you know all those popular ones which means you can use it to upload to Arduinos and ESP 32s if you connect the RTS and DTR pins you do need to have a driver. Um, the driver is not built into operating systems other than Linux. For, for Mac and Windows, we have a guide that shows you how to install the driver. Uh, it is less expensive than the CP2102s or the FTDI chips, so there's that. Um, a lot of people are starting to use this for just, not just because availability, but for cost savings, bomb savings. Um, one or two things I do want to mention because they tripped me up. One is the TX LED does not blink continuously when you're using it uh usually you know, the rx led does but the tx led like 
will only turn on every five seconds for a second or two. It's a little bit unusual. It does work, but you have to be like constantly sending data for the TX LED to work. Whereas the aux LED seems to just kind of like work as is. Um, second, in Linux and only in Linux, the CTS pin does not work with the default driver. Uh, in the product page, I link to an out of tree Linux kernel driver, which you can compile and install. Uh, that will add CTS support. I verified it on a Raspberry Pi, so the out of tree driver does work, and hopefully it'll get worked into mainline kernel eventually. Um, but it's only CTS pin. All the other pins work fine. I don't know why that pin was the one that just sort of got not tested for some reason with the driver. Um, but other than that, you know, it's very fast. It's very reliable. I've used it for uploading code to ESPs, to Arduinos, to all sorts of chips, and it works great. So. Um, as long as you don't care too much about those LEDs and you don't care about the CTS pin on Linux, this is a very good replacement, an option for um, the CP2100X series. All right. Next up, the start of show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our staff, all of our customers and more. is not this. It's, the, <laughs> it's not this. That's right. I asked you to put this in for a reason. A lot of people like to use the CCS811. It was a very popular air quality sensor from uh, SciOSense AMS, um, and it was discontinued over the COVID break. It was revised a couple times Bye. and discontinued. Very sad. Oh, However, oh. it was replaced. Uh, the CCS811 is now known as the ENS160. It is a greatly improved sensor. It still does uh, effective CO2. It does total uh, volatile, volatile organic compounds. It also has air quality. It has um, inside of it four individual box sensors, and it kind of uses the combination of them to do the algorithmic stuff. What's really nice is you don't need any weird firmware binary blobs. Um, it does emit the data over I squared C like as just very easily. So I was able to port this to Python and Circuit Python. Um, one thing I'll note is it has both I squared C and SPI interface. However. Uh, the SciOSense Arduino library and the CircuitPython library does not support SPI at this time. Um, I'm sure it, it does work, but it, we and we test all the pins, but only I squared C is, in, interface is used uh, right now. We might eventually add um, SPI as well later. Hold on. Right. I will now drop something. That's right. And now I can. Uh, we can confirm gravity is still working here. All right. So uh, here you go. Here's just a quick demo. Um, what is that? Another nice thing about this sensor is that um, you can calibrate it with uh, temperature and humidity. So um, these sensors are affected by temperature and humidity because the the, ox, the wetness, the dampness of the humidity um, will land on the mock sensors and change the resistance, um, which means that as the humidity rises, it'll think that there is more uh, organic compounds or it'll think there's more uh, CO2. However, you can, if you have a separate temperature humidity sensor, um, there's functions that you can tell it, here's what the um, humidity and temperature is in, in the area, and it will use that to calibrate and, and fix the output. Um, you know, basically, you know, like most mock sensors, um, they're not calibrated. So, you know, it is effective CO2. It's not a true CO2 sensor. It's a basic air quality indicator. Um, it does a fairly good job of detecting alcohols and stuff. Um, but you know, you're, it's not going to compare with a $60 CO2 sensor. So just be aware that said for the price, which is about 20 bucks, it's a very nice sensor and it's a nice upgrade to the CCS yeah. 811 and for everyday indoor air quality measurements, um, it does a very good job. Yeah. Probably not a bad idea to have these around. So very nice and little sensor. And that's new parts for this week. Ooh.